Hello, I'm Patricia McNeely from Twin Flame Body and Twin Flames Merge. I want to talk to you today about your immune system, boosting your immune system, taking yourself away from the fearful things and the concerns that you might be having about what's happening here worldwide. Um, this isn't the first time that something like this has happened, but I think it's the first time that we're all kind of paying attention and being a little bit more vigilant about it. So we're finally at the point where we're taking some crisis um, seriously and erring on the side of caution. And I want to help you with this because most of my audience has two sides to them. You have your human body side and you have your angelic body side. That is your light body and that is your twin flame body that can hold your template for how you can be above everything. Now, let's bring this sort of into perspective here. For me, this started at about eight years ago where I started to understand uh, because of the level of healing that I can do for people, because I do it from the fifth and the ninth dimension, that I'm removing very deep, heavy things that would take people years to get rid of. In fact, in previous times, they haven't been able to get rid of it. It's been been between, it's been living between the layers like dead wood, um, the layers of their subtle bodies for lifetimes. This is the time that things can be removed. So I had another clue recently when I found this book. This is intended as a child's book, The Story of London. And in here was a story of the Great Plague of 1665. And this was about the Black Death. And every few years, they would have another go around of the plague. But there were several things that they did wrong um, during that. And this isn't just limited to people in that area of the world, because many times in other areas of the world, they didn't do things exactly proper anyway. They would shut everyone in and quarantine, but in the same environment without fresh air. And there, you know, there were people without hygienic methods of handling the dead. It was also believed, according to this story, that somehow dogs and cats were carrying this disease. So there was a sense of, hey, something's carrying this disease and spreading it around, but it's these cats and dogs. Hunt them down and kill them. That'll fix the problem. Then it was thought that perhaps if they burned things and created a thick area of smoke, that that would somehow trap whatever was causing this and spreading it around. It says here, thousands of bonfires were lit, People thought the smoke would stop the plague spreading through the air, but it just made everybody cough. So there you go. They're having some impairment. They can't breathe properly. They're breathing in smoke, smoke inhalation. That's not going to be healthy either. And by the end of the year, right here at the bottom, by the end of the year, 80,000 people were dead. And London was a smoky ghost town. The king stayed away till February. So people abandoned it. And then in the following year was the Great Fire. So this was like a double whammy for the people in that area. You yourself may or may not remember it. But what if that was a part of your past life? What if you succumbed to the plague? And this is where I come in because I see things in past lives that they have succumbed to something. That was the thing. And this does affect every part of you, not just your physical body. The physical body disintegrates back into the elements from which you were made. And yet the other part of you does retain this sense of I died or I died of this or this is what did me in or this is the thing I'm carrying. These things run in families. These things are sometimes in us somehow, dormant. This is what they say about viruses, that they stay dormant. This is what I'm, why I'm saying to you, when the environment is proper for a virus, it propagates and it gets virulent. 
and viruses mutate so that they don't entirely kill their host. So we need to get rid of them. And this is one of the things that I have found with viruses is that if you are doing a purge or a cleanse regularly, you cleanse yourself out. You can do that in several ways. In fact, I've written it into my book, Twin Flame Ascension and Inner Healing, where in here I instruct you on how to do intermittent fasting, how to do a mini fast so that even if you're hypoglycemic, there's a way for you to do that. If you're diabetic, you need to have a special plan for doing that, which involves very low glycemic foods, liquids, juices. I myself juice every day and I do something that I would consider enzyme therapy because what are enzymes? Those are the things in case you forgot it from your high school chemistry. It's something that creates a little reaction inside you. It's this chemical meets this chemical or component and they start to cause some type of reaction. You might remember putting baking soda and then pouring vinegar on it. Funguses and viruses operate very similarly to each other where they need the proper environment to thrive. And so you want to starve them out by eliminating sugars, starches, carbohydrates, and really sticking to low glycemic high water content food. That is outlined in my book. Now, I also do wing work, which boosts your upper immunity for your breath, for your respiratory system, and for your senses. Because this is the other purpose served with why would you flare up in this area? Why would you need this. Okay. And again, this is one of those many paradoxes on the journey. Why this, if it's supposed to do that, why can't we just boost it? The inflammation serves to use the element of fire to burn things off. You would know if you have a viral infection, if you, if you spike a very high fever and that fever is sustained for a day or two and then starts to come down. If you approach 103 or higher, seek medical help. In fact, you should seek medical help anyway. But ways that you could bring that down is to apply ice or cold compresses here, the back of the neck, the armpits, the groin, and the middle of the back. That should help bring your body temperature down. But what I recommend is roll with it. If you feel chilled to the bone, put on a hat. Bundle up. I actually put on a couple layers and I put on a couple of blankets. And it's happened to me in the middle of a heat wave in July. I had, I had something happen to me where I went through a series of releasing diseases that it felt like I had had them in past lives through one bout of uh, what I feel was a viral infection, but it couldn't be identified. But I know what I was releasing. I was releasing the varicella, which is shingles and chicken pox. Um, there were other ones, uh, which I think were connected to cold and um, viral respiratory things. I could feel the inside of my lungs um, purging and healing. My skin broke out and then that took a while to heal. And the whole time I was receiving the guidance on what to do about this. Now, not everyone gets that guidance, but it's my job as a metaphysician to help people with this. And not only to help you integrate, but to maintain and to know how to do these things so that it's com as comfortable as it can possibly be. And I have supplements in there as recommended. I do also have them. So I have them on my site at www.twinflamebody.com. A few that I'll recommend um, for mental calm and clarity and for the nerves in the upper area of the body, lemon balm, which can be, these are in a capsule form. I find this to be mild enough even for children. This is in the mint family. The flavor of it tastes very similar to spearmint. 
It has a hint of lemon, which is why the name. It's called Melissa in other cultures. And it's also available as a tea. Horsetail, which I drink as a tea if you have tension in the upper area of your body. If you feel like the nerves in your upper area of your body are affected, this is a good one. This sometimes brings some immediate relief from that type of tension. What else? Other teas, especially teas with a blue color. These can be very delicious. They're easy to give to children, especially if children are sick. Give them a variety. Introduce color for them. What else? Enzyme therapy. Now, I juice every day. I'm a proponent of juices. I'm a student of Dr. Norman Walker, who did extensive research on his, um, in his clinic on enzyme therapy. And what enzymes do is they break down something or they break down the adhesions or they break things down into the elemental components so that the waste, it can just be waste and it can be evacuated from your body. But I do recommend papaya enzymes. People in Central America and Mexico know the benefit of this for years. They eat papayas and they grow there. People in Hawaii, they know it, different kind of papaya both with the proper enzymes to break things down. But this is available as a chewable, and this one has amylase and bromelain in it. Very good for the upper body to the upper gastro. And again, the dosage will be on the label. You don't want to exceed, and you might actually need less. What are some of the things about your angelic body? Your angelic body actually has um, sense, <laughs> sometimes more common sense than we do. And yet, if you have injuries, you might not be able to sense it. If you need help with that, come see me and let me help you. We will do this so that you have a concise plan because, believe me, some of these things are going to be a lot less expensive than getting major treatments or hospital stay or other types of things. I've heard from someone that the cost of testing for certain things is several thousand dollars. People go to the emergency room to get um, checked because they suddenly are having such um, hyperactivity in the chest area, high anxiety, panic, and they wind up with a bill that's $6,000 versus a couple hundred dollars. You know, between, you know, using a few things that you will benefit from and you help the person you love. I have outlined several things within here to help you about it. But I do recommend also that you do a wing work session. And there's many other things that you need. You need to build up. You're building up tissues. And really excellent one. This is supporting heart and muscle and nerve function. Your heart is a muscle, okay? It's about this big inside your chest and it's boom, boom, boom all day long. But if it's not getting a break, what do you do? You need rest, okay? This is another way that you fight illnesses is you rest yourself and you just don't get it. You say no to things and you might have to go into hermit mode which is what I call it, and yet you will come out ahead. You're all at the point where it's going to take something for you to focus on the brand new twin flame body that you're here for, really. That's what you're here for. Um, I'm not here to rain on your parade. I'm here to help you get where you need to go. So let me put it this way. How do you define unconditional love? Because I hear people say all kinds of things out there and they say, well, unconditional love means I should take any kind of behaviors and roll over and play dead and lick their boots and like just keep on going. Guess what's going to happen? Your emotional body, your mental emotional body, even your ego subtle body will not sustain that for you. It's unsustainable. You're not here to take people's crap. You're not here to lick their boots and roll over and play dead. It takes a toll. 
And this is why I do videos where I talk about the other things that your body experiences, not just the ascension symptoms, but the things that you're purging out. Why? What are these energy portals actually bringing and bringing you into a section where, hey, it's almost like saying, hey, now you can let go of that. Hey, now you don't have to take that crap. But if you're still doing it, that's not unconditional love because you're not even loving yourself. It doesn't matter if you want to focus on that person because a lot of people, they will lose it the minute that person says something. The minute that person says, I don't like you, you have to turn that around and do this for you. This is when you're always doing for you because as you do for you, you don't leave yourself there. You're not leaving bits and pieces of yourself there or like, um, you know, throw. it's like throwing away something of yourself that you're not even getting any kind of reciprocity. You're not getting anything back. This is why when I talk about your twin flame body, you have a way and you have a brand new structure that doesn't want to hold any of that crap. It, it becomes actually impossible to hold it. You're not here to hold illness. You're not here to hold ill feelings, let resentments build up, get bitter, get decrepit. That is one of the things people feel on this journey. You'll feel old. You'll feel decrepit. Why is that? Well, did you ever have a life where it was like that for you? Do you ever look around at the people around you? When it happened to me, you better believe I had a brand new respect for people who are elderly get their butts up, and really get moving because they keep it moving. They're not here to die. They're not ready to die. There was even some something that someone said, I wish I could go get on a plane and go contract this virus because then my troubles will be over. Sorry, but even that might not kill you. And guess what? Now you don't have to get on a plane. It's all coming home. So it's touching everybody. It's in our communities. And this isn't the only um, illness. There's HPV. People forget that when they want to be with someone, the person might have sexually transmitted diseases or illnesses. I'm firmly convinced, although I could not prove this to medical science, that some of the things that have caused our grandmothers, our moms, have been viruses that they haven't been able to get rid of in past lives. And though it killed them with cancer, that it somehow was the way to get this out and the way to get the research done and the way to get other people to avoid it. Get the testing. I talk to people that don't regularly get their checkups. Why not? Is it because you're uh, not sure, I can tell you that the medical community and the scientific community is putting a lot of top brains on this, but we're here to bring the heart and you have to use your common sense and throw the whole kitchen sink at yourself. Use this as an opportunity for yourself to boost your immunity because what, what I do is I help get people up into that level that befits them. That helps you bring up all of the things, and I'm writing a book about that too. That'll be coming out soon. So how do you want to live? Because I define unconditional love as I love myself so much that I want to be able to go wherever I want to with impunity and taste the things and enjoy the things and live to do it again and again with my true love. Okay? Not... Oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. It's going to hurt me. It's going to bite me. When things hurt you, you tend to hate it. Okay, your body can't hold that kind of hate. I hate you. We, you hurt me. Okay, that happened, to, that happened to me. I've had lactose intolerance and I've had um, some form of gluten intolerance. But guess what? I'm a total foodie. I love my aunts, my grandma's. Baked goods, creations. I will go, my whole family will go on a road trip for good bakery. <laughs> and we don't want to let that deter us, but we don't want to let it hurt us either. I want to enjoy some dairy here and there. 
I don't want, you know, things to get out of hand. And guess what? I've done it. Do you want to overcome some of the other things that are related to your immune system? Get your body functioning properly so that you can enjoy some holiday treats so that you don't have to draw the line or, or feel terrible like, I hate you, you hurt me. That's our natural reaction when we're in 3D. We avoid the things. How would you like to fully transcend that with the brand new body, the twin flame body, and the template of relationship so that you can have the things you want in your life that you need in your life, that you desire, and that you're not calling it quits, that there's not a deal breaker between you and the one you love, where you can't say, well, I can't eat that with you because, you know, all bets are off, or I can't do that with you. Some things need to be off the table. So I hope that I helped you understand a little bit more about viruses based on my metaphysical view of this. My metaphysical view of this is this is purging out something within a collective that hasn't been able to properly address it the right way with hygiene and proper care. And I recently had a session with someone who was in China at the time of the outbreak. And you know what she told me? It brought tears to my eyes. Everyone rallied together. Everyone just kicked it up a notch and were pitching in. That's something we don't see because the media is showing some of like the unsavory stuff. Yeah, we, we need to see it because maybe sometimes that's what needs to change. But let's be optimistic and let's get you up where you belong, not in the doldrums, not in, you know, a depression, not in resentments, not in bitterness, healthy, vibrant. Do you know how I feel most days? I feel like I'm somewhere between 25, you know, 25 years old, 22 to like 28 years old. That's how I feel physically most days. And when I say most days, I'm talking probably about 340 days of the year. There are times when we go into like those new moon energies or the retro that I'm like, oh, <laughs> here we go again. Yeah, I get it. Okay. But I also know how to get out of it. And I wrote about it and I have the sessions to do it and help you. Join my webinar if you're female. Okay. If you have daughters, if you have a mom, if you're a female, Join my webinar, which I am calling Mother Maiden Crone, to talk about the stages of your femalehood and how we are even upgrading that because your cycles are going to get wobbly whether you like it or not. So check the links below. Check it out. I hope to see you there. Reach out to me with any questions at twinflamesmerge at gmail.com. Thank you. Bye.